Well, hey, Angelo, thank you for joining me today um, for this interview regarding the New Mexico Tribal Entrepreneurship Program. Um, I think if we could just start off with you introducing yourself and then talking about why you wanted to take on the role as a tribal liaison. Awesome. Yes. Good morning, Cecilia. Thank you for having me today. My name is Angelo McCors, and I am from Taos Pueblo in northern New Mexico. And I'm sitting in the Bison Star Build right now, which is our workshop and uh, our packing and shipping station. It explains all the boxes behind me. But I am very excited to be a tribal liaison for the Tribal Entrepreneurship Program because in my line of work, I come across a lot of artisans, um, entrepreneurs that are established on the road doing shows and also a lot of startups and up and comers. So just in my everyday work, I come across a lot of um, peers, friends, families, elders that ask me and my wife, Jacqueline, who we run Bison Star together, they ask us how we're doing what we're doing. And so um, this was a natural fit for me as a tribal liaison to um, now have um, the ability um, with a bunch of resources backing me that I can share um, with my community, my entrepreneurial community. So, you know, all the um, resources through the Rainforest Innovations University Center, all the videos, um, connecting with my local small business development center and small business um, association center. So there's a lot of uh, great networking that we have through Bison Star that can be beneficial to our entrepreneurial community. So, um, you know, the main motivator for me is just to uh, help inspire others to uh, take their like careers and their um, creating, generating their own income into their own hands. And so um, I think that with the proper tools and knowledge, uh, a lot of people can benefit from on the entrepreneurial route um, because it gives you freedom of flexibility for time. Um, you can identify your own priorities. And I know in a lot of tribal communities, um, a nine to five and keeping up with all your traditional ceremonies and, you know, traditional responsibilities, they don't mix. So entrepreneurship allows um, individuals to, you know, prioritize their home, their kids, their culture, traditions, religion, and all that um, without, you know, sacrificing economic development, which we all need as um, individuals. We just need to grow in that way. Um, so I'm really happy to be a tribal liaison and be that, you know, messenger and that kind of um, connecting the dots and creating the pathways for others to succeed. So you kind of already touched on it, um, but I am wondering if you can expand on kind of what you think um, entrepreneurship within your community means to you. Um, and also kind of what experiences have led you to the work you're doing today, not just as a tribal liaison, but also as an entrepreneur. Sure. So being a tribal entrepreneur is uh, beneficial to me because like I was saying, um, and others in my community, it allows us to create our own schedules. And like being from Taos Pueblo, we still have our culture and religion intact, which is very important and held very highly and sacred by our people. And so a lot of the times a nine to five job, which is a traditional career path, it doesn't allow for people to uh, participate as much as they want or to take care of their cultural responsibilities. So I think that being an entrepreneur or artisan here in the community of Taos Pueblo, which a lot of people are, um, they choose that route because it gives them that freedom and flexibility to, you know, prioritize their needs and their culture and their people. Um, and that's kind of what kept uh, Taos Pueblo alive for thousands of years to where it is today. And so, um, you know, being an entrepreneur in our community is uh, definitely something that uh, a lot of people need help with. So that way they can develop the entrepreneurial side of their business and then also keep their personal uh, life still intact and, you know, fulfill their responsibilities, their cultural responsibilities. So um, being an entrepreneur in our community is uh, a really great opportunity to kind of take uh, control of your life and, you know, you can be on your own schedule, um, but still able to generate income and, you know, build your life with uh, uh, the business you create. 
So based on the conversations um, you've been having so far as a tribal liaison with um, either established entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs in your community um, and throughout the state of New Mexico, what are some of the needs um, that have been identified or that people have spoken about during their conversations with you? Totally. So um, here at Taos Pueblo, we have a long tradition of being a um, center for trade and bartering and for commerce really throughout all the ages. And so in our village of Taos Pueblo, there's a lot of traditional homes that are opened up um, to be um, basically like little shops. And so within those shops, there's a lot of artisans and the artisans have been doing business in a way forever. That's kind of just like um, uh, aka under the table you know a lot of kind of uh, real business but kind of unofficial and so there's a lot of um, desire to um, identify and define the transition from being just a uh, you know um, tabling to sell your stuff to where you're an actual business that can um, you know report your income and you know get get your taxes done and so some of the biggest things that I've encountered with these artisans trying to make that uh, transition to be a, an incorporated business is uh, bookkeeping and accounting. That's a big thing. Everybody wonders about, you know, how do I keep my books? How do I, you know, track my expenses? How do I, you know, um, make sure to uh, keep a good record of all my business? Um, because then it comes to the next biggest thing. Number two is taxes. Everybody wonders, okay, well, how am I going to do my taxes? And if you don't have good bookkeeping or accounting, you can't really have the data or information to do your taxes in a proper way, which is a, you know, a slippery slope. And um, of course, this program is gonna um, enable people to have a lot of resources, information, and be able to direct people to tax experts and then programming that will allow, um, you know, for these uh, folks and artisans to learn about how to properly do their accounting and, you know, do their taxes. And then number three, is just um, incorporating. You know, everybody starts as a sole proprietor. And then of course, everybody needs to know the parameters of um, when you outgrow a sole proprietorship to where it's beneficial for you to, you know, incorporate as an LLC for tax benefits, as well as to, you know, learn how to write off expenses and all these little plays that you can do to reduce your taxes and reduce your fees while you're doing business. And so, you know, then beyond that, I hope to see folks want to Go beyond an LLC and go into an S corp. I would be amazed if I see somebody go into a C corp. You know that would be amazing. Um, so, yeah, definitely those are the three biggest things. Number one, bookkeeping and accounting. Number two is taxes, and number three is um, incorporation and how to incorporate. So, you know, those are just some of the um, needs of these artisans here in my community um, to learn how to be able to um, legitimately run a business. That's all really good um, information and insight, I think, especially with the accounting and the taxes, because I think a lot of people see that as very intimidating. Um, so it's cool that you have that experience that now you can help other people kind of learn how to navigate those systems, because um, I do know that those two are huge. Um, and who knows, maybe Bison Star Naturals will become a C-Court one day. Ooh, let's go. <laughs> I could yeah. see you guys getting that <laughs> big for sure. Um, I think you've already done a really great job with your marketing. Um, I've been on other websites of other um, business websites, and I've seen your products on there. Like I was on Prabo's Beauty website yeah. the other day I saw you guys um so that's cool like you're getting out there um thank you for that compliment that's a that's a big one we definitely aspire to grow to that mm -hmm. level <laughs> well I think you it, it's definitely a possibility for your future so um what is I guess that's kind of the next question is, what is one goal that you have as a liaison? But then I kind of want to add on to that question and ask, what is a goal for that you have for your business, like going forward? Yeah, so um, I think one of the main goals of being a tribal liaison is to just expand our network. 
because I feel like uh, a strong network gives your business um, and yourself individually uh, the power to not only help people in, on an individual level with the, to direct people to the, you know, like I was saying, connect the dots and direct people to the right resources and the right person or the right information. And then number two, I also think that um, being a tribal liaison, uh, one of my goals is to sit at this, use that as a tool to sit at the same table as decision makers. Because once that you work in your community and you start helping other people reach their, you know, financial or their business goals, then you kind of get the attention as like an individual in your community that has um, influence. And so, you know, that will also help you grow your network. And then I hope to be invited to tables of decision makers, you know, like with policy makers with my own tribes, um, business and economic development um, council and advisory board, you know, and, um, you know, it's wonderful that I've already been getting um, in contact and collaborating with like the Taos Pueblo Tourism Director to have the tourism program and Bison Star working hand in hand to get these resources to our artisans and our community. And um, I, you know, know that tribal government is soon to follow once they see the positive impact that this myself and this pro with this program backing me it'll you know rainforest innovations backing me they'll see the great resources that are available and then i can be um you know a pathway for folks and then so as far as for bison star naturals our business um we definitely just working hard uh, to grow year over year to keep demonstrating growth and this tribal liaison pro program definitely helps with that because it not only gets myself personally out there, but, you know, I represent Bison Star. And so Bison Star also gets out there to grow its networks. And, you know, um, since we are working with a lot of um, other programming, there's a lot of directors in those programmings and boards of the programming. And we're also able to offer our gift fulfillment service. We're also able to like inquire about wholesale partnership with different people. And then um, most importantly, you know, we hope to just uh, grow to a point where we can employ more people um, here at Taos Pueblo. So that way we can create jobs. And then my wife and I, we can, you know, move and make the transition from working in our business 24 seven all the time to take care of all of its functions to moving to work on our business. So that way we have a nice strong team that's established automating the, the operations of Bison Star. So my wife and I can we step outside of the trenches, so to speak, to look inward, to be able to make some macro change, to make things more efficient, and to also just um, continue to develop new products, continue to do our networking, to create new partnerships. And, um, you know, one of the measurable goals that can demonstrate that growth is uh, number one, you know, new employees um, and jobs created, but then also number two is new large um basically wholesale partners or, you know, gift fulfillment partners. So we can generate that revenue to bring in that income, to be able to have the working capital to hire those people and to continue to grow our business and develop our, um, our workshop, as well as, you know, develop all of our equipment and our machinery and, you know, just be able to uh, kind of open up bottlenecks in our business uh, model and our business flow. But of course, um, opening up those bottlenecks takes uh, much work and capital. So that's why, you know, we're really excited to, um, number one, be tribal liaisons to expand our network and help as many as we can. But then also number two, um, expanding that network and having Bison Star be represented in that kind of work will also um, give Bison Star a push forward with business and new wholesale opportunities as well as gift fulfillment partnerships. Um, you mentioned job growth and employment, and I'm just curious um, how many jobs you've been able to create so far with Bison Star Naturals. Um, I know it's like you and your wife, um, but I also know you have some other people helping you. So I'm just curious. Yeah, totally. So, you know, we've definitely had three additional employees to help us with production, to help us with selling at markets and selling at different events around the state. And so those employees are awesome on the books employees, you know, where we, they're on the payroll, 
um, their official jobs that are created that can be, you know, um, seen by the state or, you know, whoever does our taxes, because <laughs> we definitely pay for it. So, um, to, and also we have like, what's I like to, what we like to call a decentralized network of help. And so what that means is an example of it is we go around, um, since we have a very developed online platform for web sales through our website, we have a section in there called featured artisans. And in that featured artisan section, we uh, promote a lot of our artisans that we work with. And the way we're able to do that is we wholesale their products, but only a small product of theirs, you know, so let's just take Lyle's creations. For example, he was one of our first artisans that we really started to work with on a regular basis. He's a silversmith and he made little um, Buffalo nickel earrings for us. And they were just very simple Buffalo nickel earrings made out of silver. We would buy them from him and he, he would sell us like 10 to 20 pairs at a time. And we would pay him outright, which is like, he would give us a wholesale deal. And then we would list that stuff on our website and then link everybody to our, our featured artisan page so they can see who makes that um, art and um, how to get in contact with them. So that way for his larger pieces, like rather than just some little affordable, nice earrings, if somebody wants to get a big bracelet or a custom bolo or, you know, a hat band, whatever, what have you, he's able to get the business directly. And we are out of the picture except for just putting them on and getting them the connection that they need um, to be able to generate more business. And so we've had an ebb and flow of featured artisans throughout our um, years of working. And so, you know, I say we've um, definitely helped generate some income and revenues for over like 30 different artisans in our community. Because we, before the pandemic, we were also hosting artisan markets here at the Bison Star Build, where we would invite all of our um, community to set up for free and um, invite out all of our community through our social media um, to come out and check out our artisan market. And they had been successful. And that's where we got a lot of our artisans who said, well, hey, I have these little items, you know, let's do some wholesale. And then our part was saying, oh, yeah, that's a great idea. You can win by making some money right off the bat. And then you'll get residual customers. And um, you'll also get all the exposure to our entire network of uh, followers. So, um, you know, as far as employment goes, we have three main employees that are on the books. And we hope to grow that to, you know, automate our production as well as get more help with events so we can do more events and do double bookings and stuff like that in the peak seasons. Um, and so we also utilize those employees. They're multifaceted. So they help us with packing and shipping. They can help us with production. They can help us with selling. Um, so that's what we hope to do is to get more people on the books. So that way they have a, um, a paycheck, you know, and the decentralized, um, artisan market page is like a, a great way to get people on without us having to take the um, the full tax liability of, you know, hiring folks. We're just more like a kind of decentralized. That's the, that's the best way I can explain it. You know what I mean? Is we're not responsible for them, but we can um, have a symbiotic relationship where we're benefiting each other um, based on the resources that we have at the, at the time. I love that. I think it's, um, I mean, just that collaboration and kind of that community based economic development versus just like that individualized mentality that we see so often. Um, I think when it comes to like, not just our tribal communities, but our New Mexican communities in general, we're a lot more successful when we have those types of connections and collaborations and when we're helping each other and promoting each other. And I think it's just so awesome that you guys are doing that. Um, and I, I would like to see more businesses and more small businesses in New Mexico doing that as well, you know, just supporting one another. Because I think that that type of um, economic development, more like community-based economic development is what will really help our communities, especially in the rural parts of our state. Um, 
So thanks for sharing that. I think it's something really awesome that you guys are doing. Um, and a good example of what other people um, might be able to do with their own businesses as well. Um, I think just to end um, the conversation, the last question I want to ask is, what is one piece of advice that you'd give to an entrepreneur or an aspiring entrepreneur who is interested in starting a business or engaging with our program, but maybe they're unsure or afraid to take that leap into entrepreneurship? Yeah, totally. That's a good question. Um, there's a lot of advice I could give, but one of the best things that um, I can say is if you are thinking about starting your own business or if you're interested in entrepreneurship, um, but you still have a full-time job, or even if you don't, um, you know, there's 24 hours in the day. I know eight of it goes to work. I know, you know, the other six goes to the kids and taking them to and from school, getting them ready, or your grandparents or whatever responsibilities that family and home bring, right? But then, you know, there's a whole nother uh, 10 hours for you to um, get your eight hours of sleep in <laughs> or six hours. Uh, and then that leaves you with two to four hours every day of free time that you don't have to, you know, get on Netflix. You don't have to like, you know, w scroll on social media. You don't have to play video games if you're younger or whatever. You know what I mean? There's, um, it's good practice to try to maximize your time because when you become an entrepreneur, you will learn that you have to maximize all your time and you have to work during all those extra hours to get, um, to reach your entrepreneurial goals. Because one of my, I'm not trying to scare you guys, but one of my favorite sayings is that uh, when you give up your nine to five, 40 hour a week job to do entrepreneurship, you're signing on for an 80 hour a week job. So, you know, but What's beautiful about that is there's no cap in how far you can climb the, you know, income ladder. You can go as high as you want, make as much income as you want, based on how determined and persistent you are. Um, and then also number two, with entrepreneurship, you just, you know, you get freedom of flexibility to, you know, uh, identify your priorities and uh, live your life as you see fit. And of course, your, your entrepreneurial journey is going to take up the bulk of that time beyond your home, family, sleep, and other responsibilities. But what's beautiful is that, you know, you can take that lunch hike if you want to clear your mind and reorient. You know what I mean? You can um, set your business aside for one day if you have a family emergency or, you know, if you have the um, PTA at school, you know, uh, that you have to take care of, like all those things you know, um, that's what's beautiful. You can, oh, you're, you know, you have a cultural responsibility you have to take care of. Well, you don't have a job that's holding you back or, you know, you won't, you can, you can definitely rearrange your time as an entrepreneur. Whereas if you work for a corporation or something, they'll replace you if you have to take care of um, other responsibilities um, during the designated work hours. Um, so I would just say, don't be afraid. Um, go ahead and jump off that cliff, make sure to spread your wings. And there's going to be a lot of um, updrafts to show you how to fly um, and to help you fly along in your entrepreneurial journey. So just like Rainforest Innovations is and their tribal liaison, um, tribal entrepreneurship program, these are all things that will, you know, put um, updrafts underneath your wings during your entrepreneurial journey. And it's scary, but you know, go ahead and just uh, try it because uh, that's the other thing is it's better to try that hat on and know it doesn't fit you and take it off than to never try on that hat in the first place. Because, you know, the best one other good thing about entrepreneurship is that if you try it and it's too much or it's not for you or you're not ready for it in your life, you can always just go get a job again and, you know, work again and you'll be able to secure an income. So, um, don't be afraid to try it. It's better to try it and know whether you like it or not than to not try it at all. I think that's a really important um, point to note is that just try it. You know, you it's okay to fail. And if you yes. fail and you decide that it's not for you, because true, truly entrepreneurship isn't for everyone and that's okay. 
Um, but you never know if it's for you or not unless you try. And you're absolutely right. If it's not for you, you can just go get a job again and that's okay. Um, yep. That's perfectly fine. Um, so I, I think that's really, really good advice and insightful. So thank you for sharing and thank you for um, your time to do this interview and just sharing a little bit about yourself and your journey and um, what you've learned as an entrepreneur so far. Um, we're very lucky to have you with us as a tribal liaison. Um, and I look forward to continued conversations as um, this program continues to develop and evolve. So thank you so much. Thank you, Cecilia. I appreciate all the uh, moderation you're doing and all the awesome work for uh, keeping all us liaisons together and uh, yeah, all going towards a common direction. I really appreciate all the work you're putting in. Thank you.